Good morning. This is where we stayed last night and we'll be staying tonight as well. We are in Zadar and we are going to go and explore the city before our walking tour starts at 1.30. But first, coffee. coffee was fantastic. Not only did they have plant-based milk for Rachel's sake, but they also had a magic on offer, which is one of my favorite types of coffee to have. So that was awesome. We're now going to explore a bit of Zadar Old Town. We've just come across People's Square. It is included on our walking tour later, but this is the Croatian word for it. Behind me is St. Simeon Church. It is also included on our walking tour later, but we won't get to go inside, so we're gonna do that now. So we've just been inside the church. We weren't allowed to take um, any photos or take them to film, hence why we haven't seen any. But in terms of kind of our impressions, then it's very nice inside. It's very understated in comparison to a lot of the churches that we saw in Italy. And I think the main reason is just because of the money. When I came to it, then you look at sort of Florence and Pisa and Rome and all that, and at the end of the day, the people that were running those just had a lot of money. Uh, whereas I would imagine that in this part of the world that Perhaps that wasn't the case. But in terms of the artwork that is there, there's a lot of sculpture, there's a lot of reliefs. Uh, I think there were some remnants of some frescoes, so I'm not sure if there was damage here. But I guess we'll find out. But with what is here, then it's very nicely done and it's gorgeous. Yeah, I would say the interior walls and ceilings are completely bare. It's just concrete and bricks. And there were a total of five altars around the church. And again, beautifully done, but even those five altars are definitely more simple and less ornate than what we've been seeing. I've gone down to the waterfront to see a very unique piece of architecture. What you may or may not be hearing in the background right now is called the Sea Organ. It's about 230 feet in length and each of the steps that you'll see contains a series of different pipes. Each of those pipes then creates a different chord and it's then put into a network whereby if you push water through it then air comes out and with the air that comes out then that produces music. It's a really really interesting thing. I'm going to walk over and film a bit and hopefully you'll be able to hear some of it. This is that when you're sat here and the sea starts picking up and really starts like making really loud notes, you can feel it. Like you can feel the vibrations on your palm. It's really weird, but the music is beautiful. We 
are now at the meeting spot for our walking tour. I feel like we've probably seen a lot of the buildings that are already on that list, but it'll be really nice to get some more context about them all. We just finished our walking tour and our guide was so informative. He clearly had a love of history and imparted it in detail. So I'm finding it kind of hard to recall everything, but the things that stood out to me were the fact that Zadar in particular was ruled by so many different people. It was the Romans, the Byzantines, the Venetians, the French, the Hungarians, the Austrians, the Italians, and then by Yugoslavia. And as a result of this, all of the buildings and architecture are a combination. I think the ones that I noticed the most were the combination of Roman and Austrian, or Roman and then communist, or from Yugoslavian times. What did you think? I mean, honestly, I thought the same. Um, I thought it was just really interesting. I don't think I've seen a city like this whereby basically every street and every building that you see is really a cross-section of who it was ruled by and it seems to be such a crazy patchwork of the entire history of the city which for such a small space makes it very unique I guess. In terms of what we're going to do now though. I think we're going to go back to St. Anastasia's Cathedral and try and get in there because the tour included it but we didn't get to go inside and it's another free place to visit. And it's closed so we're gonna try something else. But we couldn't have taken photographs inside anyway so you wouldn't have been able to see it. that candy emporium but we have swiftly moved on otherwise we would have purchased everything in there why don't they offer free tastings that's a genius business idea but it would mean they'd lose a lot of money very quickly so i kind of understand We just finished up our delicious dinner at Mysteria, which was recommended by our tour guide. We both had the black risotto with cuttlefish, which is a traditional dish. And the greatest thing was like we kind of ended up scouting around a lot of restaurants in the city in order to try and find the best price, and actually that one was the best one by far. And the quality was superb. So highly recommend Mysteria as the restaurant to go to for that. We are going to head back to our hostel, so not much else to show you. So with that, until next time, take care. And keep smiling. Zadar in particular was ruled by so many different people. It was the Roman teens. We both had the traditional black risotto with cuttlefish, which is a traditional dish. 